Hello. I'm making this video because I thought I'd share my method by which I paint my Napoleonic French Imperial Guard Grenadiers. Um, I paint them to a, a tabletop standard and they come out looking something like this. Uh, which I consider, you know, a good tabletop standard. Um, these are by no means going to win any sort of painting competitions, but I'm going to show you a way that I paint these that gets them on the table fairly quickly and lets you deal with large batches of models quickly. So here you can see that we've got a Imperial Guard Grenadier. Now this is a Vitrix model. Uh, it's been assembled and it's been primed with the Army Painter Spray Undercoat Ultramarine. So I've just waited for that to dry. And I'm just going to take you through the steps that I do to get this guy table ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is now he's been undercoated in Ultramarine, I am going to give him an all over wash with a blue shade. I'm just using Vallejo Blue Shade wash and I've mixed it 50-50 with water and I'm just going to put that all over the model. Okay so when that wash is dry the first thing I move on to doing is blocking in the black areas so I'm going to start by doing the bear skin. Uh, the cartridge pouch, his footwear and also the scabbards uh, on the swords. Yeah, so any black will do. And just very simply, just going to block that in. Get some good coverage on that. Okay, so we've got those areas done. And the next thing that I'm going to paint is the backpack. Now, I do these in a number of different colours and they range from light brown, dark brown, greys and greens. I've chosen to do this one in Vallejo yellow green and again I'm just going to block this one in. Okay that's done so next I'm going to use Vallejo flat flesh and I'm just going to paint the face and the hands. Doesn't matter if I get the facial hair in at this point because I am going to be painting that again anyway. Now, before I go any further ahead with anything else, I've got to do the most awkward part of any Napoleonic model, in my opinion, and that's the uh, the cross belts and the white details um, on on this model. Now, fortunately, this guy's wearing a great coat, so that's limited to the cross belt that you can see here, um, and some of the smaller belts behind, and then um, the bits on the backpack. So all I do is I use any white so just your basic white and you just want to carefully pick those out okay and those are now done so next i'm now going to paint the epaulette on his uniform and also the red on top of his bare skin. Now I'm going to use corn red as a base for that and then that will get highlighted up in the next step. Okay, the next step is a very simple one. We're just going to paint the water bottle that's hanging from his belt uh, with a light brown, I'm using Guncore Brown from the P3 range. Okay, so I've completed that small part there. And uh, I now just want to work on putting the musket colours on. So I like to use a reddish brown. When I'm painting the muskets and I'm using Blood Tracker Brown from P3 for this one. 
So all I do is just layer it in on the musket. Again, just being careful to try and avoid getting any on the blue. We can correct it if we have to. It's just easier not to have to. Okay, so that's the uh, the gun done. Now, while that's still drying, I'm going to work on the gold uh, on his bear skin and also on the swords on his back. I know it's looking quite rough at the moment, but trust me, once we get the washes on and we start tidying things up at the end and doing a couple of dry brushes, it'll all it'll all be worth it. Um, I'm just using Retributor Gold from uh, Games Workshop. Any dull gold will do, but because we're going to highlight this up with a brighter gold uh, later on. One thing I'm not going to do at this point, I'm not going to work on the buttons on the great coat. Not yet. And that will come later on. Okay. So those metal parts are now done. I've just realised I've done a, a couple of small bits and not filmed it. Um, I've done his facial hair um, and his sideburns. I've done those in a light grey uh, just because what's his old guard. And I've also just done this um, bit of green on the tassel that's hanging from the from the blade. I don't know if that's the correct colour, if that's what they wore. Um, but I just picked it. I like it to stand out. Um, now I'm just going to do the gunmetal uh, on here and I'm using a very originally named colour called gunmetal, that's from the Vallejo game colour range and I'm just going to put that up the metal parts of the musket and on the bayonet at the top. Okay so that is all of the colours block painted in and I'm now going to do something which I think might be a bit controversial. I'm now going to wash the entire model uh, with the Citadel Known Oil shade um, and this is going to create all our areas of shadow to contrast them and really bring out some details. Now I don't just put this on straight, it's going to be two parts of Known Oil to one part of water, so just a two to one mix and we're just going to paint it over the entire model face everything the whole lot now, right once that wash is completely dried i'm going to do a very light wash of reichland flesh shade just over the flesh areas just to add a bit of a different tone to it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back over the white on the cross belts and I'm going to use flat white again. But I'm just going to try and keep a centre line and leave the sort of shaded areas on the outside so it looks a little bit more worn. I have to be a little bit more careful now. This will be where I make a mistake. While the white is drying, I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop from Citadel to highlight the epaulets. And I'm going to try and draw just little lines downwards on the actual epaulet and try and let some of that undercoat show through. Right, next I'm going to move on to doing his flesh. And I'm going to highlight that with Rin Flesh from P3, and I'm going to focus on the chin, the nose, and top of the cheeks for the face, and a very light highlights on the hand.
Okay, only a couple of stages left. I am now going to use a brighter silver colour. I'm using a chrome from the Vallejo Air range and I'm just very simply going to highlight the upper parts of the metallic portions of the musket along the barrel and the flint lock mechanism at the bottom just here and finally I'm just going to use uh, Dark Star Molten Metals Classic Gold. I haven't found a better gold than this. And I'm going to highlight the eagle on top of the plate on his hat. Just give that a little bit more emphasis. And I'm also going to do the buttons on his great coat and also the hilt uh, on the swords on the back. Okay, so now I'm just into one of the final stages and that's to use a uh, deck tan from Vallejo to do a dry brush over the entire model. But the dry brush is gonna be a very, very, very light dry brush. And what that will do is that will pick up some of the extreme details, but it will also help add a sense of wear to the model. I mean, I, I'd like this model to look like he's marched all across Europe with Napoleon. Um, so let's just give a very light dry brush. It will pick out some of the texture on the bare skin. Like that. Also on the backpack, give you a bit of edge highlighting on the paraphernalia on him. And that's probably all you need to do. Just that much there. You can see. It just gives him a more worn, battle-worn appearance. Now I'm going to do a very, very light dry brush of light brown along the bottom of the great coat. And then I'm going to show you the, uh, the final part of painting this, this guy. Okay, final part. As I want this model to be placed within the 100 days campaign like the rest of my models and given that the weather was especially uh, wet at that time I'm going to add some wet mud effects um, onto, onto the great coat and after that I use this stuff which is Vallejo Thick Mud uh, Diorama Paste you can see it's a, uh, well it's a paste and what I do is I use an old brush and don't get very much on it. Let's take some of that off. And then I'm going to stipple this all around the bottom of his cloak. And it will just look like he has been trudging through through the mud in Belgium. The great stuff about this um, this paste is that it's got tiny bits of foliage and sort of like static grass and matter in it so it i really set some model off you could probably get the same effect with texture paint um, and add your own bits of flock into it but i really like this stuff it's it's consistent and one pot has lasted me the best part of uh, three years okay and he is done and dusted and there we go i'm pretty pleased as i say these aren't isn't sort of an award-winning paint job but what I'm trying to do is just have a method by which I can paint a lot of these guys quickly and have them on the battlefield so we can carry on playing games now I normally production line these and I do them six at a time because that's how I base them and then I have four stands to a unit so I can normally do six of these guys in just just over an hour, um, so just just an evening to knock out a stand. Um, as you can see, it's just to pull out some details. I like the worn look. Some people like having a nice crisp, uniform, fresh look. I like having a battle-weary, uh, worn look. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you have any questions or anything for me, then drop a comment or send me a message. Cheers.